Hey, it's Jordan. I uh, am live here in the Bronx in New York. It is, let me check, almost 90 degrees out. Feels like 100 degrees. Uh, we are right in front of, uh, right there, uh, this is AOC's uh, office in the Bronx. Um, it also is shared with a local assemblywoman, uh, Karinas Reyes. But this is uh, AOC's uh, local district office in the Bronx. As you can see, it's gated up. Uh, from what I've been told by uh, folks that are here, this is technically public hours for her district where they're supposed to be open, so I'm not sure why it's closed. A lot of folks here, uh, some of the folks here were at the Medicare for All March in Washington, D.C. that we covered, that Jen covered the other day, and now they've come up uh, to essentially protest uh, based on feeling Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez is not, is not honoring what she ran on, is not fighting hard enough uh, to achieve Medicare for All, to pressure, to pressure for Medicare for All. So we'll be listening to speakers. I'm here to say to the squad and especially AOC who, you know, did make a lot of promises that um, we still have faith in you and we would like to see if you have a, a better plan than we've been able to see, please share it. If there's a pathway that you've got that we're not aware of, please share it because we're losing hope here that you represent us. And it's so difficult for people that are independent to get elected in the first place. And then to see the very people that sponsored the bill not stand up for it, it's very disheartening. Yay! She ran not to be a politician. She ran to be an activist and an organizer who happened to be in office. Imagine if she had committed herself to organizing the march. Imagine why is it that people, I, I know, when you get into Congress, you get $174,000 salary, you get a pension after five years, you get the best health care in the world, but the rest of us are still suffering. What good does it do to have representatives in office who don't take corporate money if they're listening to the politicians that do? If she had committed herself to organizing, or the other squad members had committed themselves to organizing, to bringing people out to these marches, they could have been 10 times, 100 times bigger. That's the power they have. Injustice isn't just the misuse of power, it is failing to use your power for good. I'm gonna hand it over now to someone who just joined us, if she's ready if she's ready to give him hell, like she's been giving him hell for the last four years, running against Joe Manchin, running against Shelley Moore Capito. Even when she won her primary, the Democrats came in and worked against her. She was the general election candidate. Imagine if instead of Joe Manchin or Shelley Moore Capito, we had Paula Jean Swearingen in office right now. I know what it's like to go without a glass of clean water. I know what it's like to struggle and go hungry when the market for coal is down. I know what it's like as an activist to move into, to be in a political candidate when I never wanted to be, but nobody would challenge Joe Manchin. But I'm gonna tell you who stood with me. AOC, Cori Bush, when Cori Bush was out yesterday, she came out to the marches, I hope she signed their petition. But I've stood shoulder to shoulder with these people. 
because children in my state and here in the Bronx stood with us. The Bronx stood with West Virginia. Now I'm back here where she, wo she worked with me. I'm here to say I stand with the Bronx. We need Medicare for all. We need a living wage. Yeah. We need roofs over our heads. We need something so basic as a clean glass of water. People have to get arrested in him and Shelly Marcapito's office to be heard. And this is a sound check, AOC. This is a sound check, sis. We stood with you. We need you to stand with us. Yeah. You need to stand with the people that donated, worked hours and hours to get there, stood shoulder to shoulder with you and amplified your voice. There were people all over this country standing out in the street still, begging for Medicare for all. And all it would took, God bless her for being out with Senator Turner and trying to get her elected. But all it would have took is a tweet, an email, and just saying, I still stand for this, and sending people out and mobilizing and telling the people that she works with now to do their damn jobs. The fundamentals are the bar is up here, and anyone below that bar is suffering. They should not have a, be having us play Poverty Olympics to try to decide who deserves health care and needs help in this country. Yeah. We all damn well deserve health care. Yeah. I myself have grew up in Astoria, Queens. I've lived in AOC's district my entire life and I voted for her twice. So why is it that she has abandoned her campaign promises on Medicare for all? I'll tell you why. Because she wants to make sure that she appeases her corporate masters like Nancy Pelosi instead of us. Well, I'll tell you what. If Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are owned by the special interests and the greed of the private health insurance companies and the big pharmaceutical companies, then all the progressives in the squad are by indirectly and de facto also owned by those corporate masters. When he called Fidelis, he found out he missed a $20 payment to his Medicaid program. The medication they cut him off of was Risperidol. It had a known suicidal risk from withdrawals. Three weeks later, on April 9th, I saw a suicide note on Facebook. He tells us, I can't get above this pain, and I've decided death by drowning. This ain't right. My son was on Medicaid. Medicaid, a program for the poorest and sickest among us. Centene is the one who owns Fidelis Care. They made $60.1 billion and had a 24% growth in 2018 after adding managed Medicaid. Fast forward to the year of pandemic, $111.8 billion, almost doubled their revenue during a pandemic. The faster we die, the more profits they make. This is disgusting. Every other country in the world guarantees health care as a human right. Here in America, we guarantee contracts that deny us health care. If you don't pay for that contract, they're now threatening us with a federal penalty. You either pay to get denied health care or you'll get penalized by our government. Um, before the pandemic. So the number one thing that all these jobs do and when you ask for a raise, they give you a perk. One of the perks is health care. Having health care tied to employment is gross, it's, in, it's, a, it's insensitive, it's inhumane. And because it keeps you locked to a job you don't want, it keeps you locked to a job that you have to keep, because guess what? If you don't like your job, you've now lost your health care. Now you can't go see your doctor. So I'm tied to my job, because guess what? That's how my kids are safe, and that's how I'm safe. I've been undocumented and stateless since I was probably the age of eight in 1979 and even though I'm, also, I'm undocumented and stateless there's no difference between me and a citizen when it comes to health care between me and a, a legal permanent resident I have to go to the emergency room if I have a serious problem with my health if I get hit by a car if I get shot stabbed whatever happens wake up with pneumonia, I have to go to the, to the emergency room. And so does a citizen, so does a legal permanent resident, because nobody has health care if you're part of the working poor, right? If, you, if you're not a rich parasite, 
or some trust fund brat, you know, you have to, you have to pay. Um, this is what I think people need to be doing. This is what I think people need to be doing. Not ranting and raving on the internet, not calling everybody and their mother frauds, sellouts, uh, you know, canceling people who aren't doing exactly what you want. You should be outside their offices demanding what you, what you want constructively. This is actually constructive. If this, these numbers can build. Uh, most of the people speaking here weren't demonizing uh, AOC or, or the squad. Susan Sarandon, I think, said it best. We want to back you up. We want to be there with you. We want to believe in you. But if you're not going to do what you said we're going to do, we're going to be outside your office or we're going to go to D.C. Or if necessary, we'll primary 